right, we're gonna talk about side control, pressure, rolling the hips. Uh, Christian Lombardi, you <laughs> Rolling the hips and getting the arms out of position. You gotta keep in mind that side control is this type of a situation where it's hard to get, easy to lose. So for me to get side control, I gotta get on the inside of his right elbow, right knee, okay? From here, if I don't do anything, and he gets ahead of me, two hip movements, are, this right here is already, I lost side control. It's hard to get, easy to lose. So a couple of ways to control the side, because the key to the side control is the control. I have to be dynamic. I have to also keep him flat. And I also want to begin to staple his arms and control him. So one of the more effective ways for me to do that as I feel him engage a little bit here, walk the hip and I begin to walk the more north-south top of the position here, which enables me to be further away. So, which enables me to be further away from his legs, so I'm in a lot less danger of being put back in an open guard or a half guard. And I can control his hip and control pressure and constantly keep him flat. That's my objective. But also, as I started on that side, okay, I can also work my way to the opposite side here. And I keep rolling the hips, and rolling the hips, and rolling the hips, as you see here right here, here what happens. A lot of times the hand comes up, you push it right here, you pinch it here, and you lift, and you do a key lock right here. Sometimes you get it, oftentimes, yes. Okay. Control that arm, staple it here, bring it up and over, get here, and then you can get to this position here, where I can begin to now roll him back for what appears to be an omoplata or a triangle, but he'll block my leg. And I'll grab this right here, and then I'll squeeze the air right out. And they're really super tight arm lock, or if he pulls this down and gets it free, Keep going for them, plot it. The hip. And then keep moving, controlling, and finishing. So it's a great setup. Okay. Walking around the head. You gotta roll the hips two feet right of that logo. So what I'm gonna do, okay, with the objective of keeping him flat. If you notice, I'm not doing this like a plank. I wanna literally roll. Here, I'm gonna roll, switch my arms here, and then I wanna walk right across. I turn the center of my hip. I know my left hip is down, it's like a sprawl, and I keep pushing myself up. From here, the goal is also to get his arms out of position. I roll to my right hip here, I roll to my left hip here, and I keep rolling, and it doesn't feel very good for him because from here I can get to that position here, push this down as a key lock, okay? Or because my elbow's on the inside here. Can get to here also, and I can begin to give him a little bit of a. <laughs> that arm, uh, arm triangle. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is to walk around, to go side control. I call this angled north south. Look how I roll that hip over this frame here. I roll it here. My arm comes up and over. Right hand blocks the hip, and I get here. I do not want to be here. I don't really have any weight on him. If you see how he can move out from underneath me, not good. I have to be here. I'm controlling his hip with my right hand. And I can feel his left cheek on my hip. Okay? And as I go this way, bring your right hip. As you get here, you can get here. Okay? From here. Lock the hips, and again I'm blocking here, trying to get his arms out of position here. Roll the hip here. Yeah, out of position his arms get. If I can get here, I can get here. Hold him flat, adjust so that his elbow goes into my arm to hold. And I'm here. But the objective is just to walk around the head and see where you get the arms out of position. Because I'll show you how to set up a proper paper cutter too. So look. Here, if you feel that frame right here, if I pull it up, I can roll over it also. But what happens also here is 
she's framing my hip here. But if you pull it up, he'll kind of pull it down. If you also, then he'll reframe here. Okay? With this other part right here. Yeah. Because he pushes right in that shoulder right here. But I can also push and disconnect my hip and literally roll right over it and kill that point here. One, two, here. And then I'll roll to my right hip here. Okay, and I feel that arm right there. And then you can get here. You get a good paper cut. Paper cutters are easier to defend than they are to finish. So I'll show you two types of paper cutters. But the whole key is to get the arm out of position here. Yeah, and how we got that is through here. Look, from here. And I give him a good pressure to the kind of belly here. And instead of going over here, his arm is going to protect it. Okay. I want to go right here. And then crawl up as far as I can. And then I want to plank and roll. Okay. So this is how you get that arm caught out. Okay. You can set it up on that arm too, but you'll have a dominant side. But the key right now is to just walk around that. Look right here. I'm framing, push, and roll. See, I close it more like an alligator mouth. And I roll the hip, block the hip. We cross here, we cross here. Nice and tight right here. I'll do it from the angle. You can get this thick right here. You can also, you can get a mount also from here too. This is a good mounting option. If I feel him turning, I need to readjust the moment back. So whenever he turns to the side, it's good for him, bad for me. I need to flatten him, flatten him, and he's bad for him, good for me. So anytime good for me, bad for him, it turns into good for him, it turns automatically bad for me. Right. It's easier to recognize than any other assessment. Good him, bad me, I take good for his, turning into bad, turns into good for me. It's right, basic, can't kill can, can. me. But here, Walk this so he can follow me. Roll right over here. As you see, his arm's getting out of position here. Block that hip so he can't follow me. I can frame his hip with my head. Follow this right here. Bring this over here. And then get right here and get that arm. Push it. Pinch it right here. And just pull that elbow up. And you get like a key lock. Sometimes, maybe they'll pull it out. And then you can mount him with a lot of pressure here. And then he's on the suck. Okay. So all I want you guys to do is just walk around the head and walk back. And you gotta make it maximum pressure. So the objective here, when I start on this side right here, if I feel him turning to the side, I need to roll him. See, he turns away, I roll him out. He turns into me. And I'm giving him a minimum of one to one. He gives me a plus one, I give him a minus one. Yeah, that changes everything right there. Because now whether he goes to the side, is less of a factor. If he starts turning to the side, it becomes really bad for him. You get here, you get here, you get here, you get here more. And this is what I call North South Matrix. And when you have that elbow isolated here, you can begin to get a wrist locks here. It, it, because when the elbow can't move, that's when that wrist can get torched. If he can move his elbow, the hardest to get a wrist lock. Okay. So you want to get their arms out of position. You can go from here. You can roll the hips. Okay. See where the arms are, and arms there. Watch. But here I, I can feel his right arm is under my leg, probably. Yeah.
reverse just because the way we set up, okay? So, walking around the head, let's go. One, two, three. Pressure. Roll the hips. <laughs> 